When somebody asked me a long time ago, about 10 years ago, to kind of create a motto for the foundation, it was to create the joy of Jewish living, giving, and learning. And so through that, I decided to really focus on the next generation. I believe in the future and creativity and encouraging this, and you are part of that future as are the two ladies behind the camera. If you think about the history, the, the sort of modern history, the history of, of Jewish life in the 20th century, mm -hmm. you had a kind of, uh, you had some basic fundamental values and precepts. For example, following the Shoah, in terms of what, 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 what do we need as a Jewish people following the Shoah, so never again, right? What, what can we do? And at least in one point of that, that was to have a sovereign state with a military of our own that could always protect the Jewish people. That was, by and large, a fundamental view with, virtu with which virtually every Jew agreed. We're trying to see if there are things that exist today, if there are common principles and, and common values that, particularly among young adults, that we can weave together a network, a community, a foundation of young adults who share some basic fundamental values, and then they will help change the Jewish world, and the changed Jewish world will then help change the world. The essence of being Jewish to me is kind of like repair the world to make this world a better place, to make somebody feel what it's like to help another human being, to care about another human being. I also feel a strong sense of community, of connectedness to fellow Jews that I think maybe is not quite as strong today. It, it's more humanistic today, but um, I just you know, taking care of each other. And I think in a way that might be missing from this generation because they're so plugged into Twitter or their whatever that they sometimes miss that. There's certain elements that used to bring us together in a common bond that sometimes I think we miss today. One of the great issues facing the Jewish people is this question of inclusivity and diversity. That the, the, the demographics of the Jewish community is changing significantly. It's changing in the state of Israel, which doesn't look at all like the state of Israel did back in the 1940s and the 1950s, where for, for all intents and purposes you had the Ashkenazi community and the Sephardic community, that was it. Today there's much more of a diversity among Jews in Israel. That is clearly the case in terms of Jewish life in America. Uh, just not in part because of intermarriage, uh, but also because of adoption in terms of, of Jewish couples adopting uh, children from different ethnicities from around the world and raising them as Jews. And that also means that we're going to have the introduction of new cultures, of new ideas, of new perspectives in the Jewish life, with, which we believe is going to enrich Judaism to help Judaism continue to grow and to prosper and to, again, help lead the world. We don't have 10 million people out there that want to be Jewish, that we can run around saying, well, you can't be Jewish because you're this, or you have to do this. And, and I very strongly believe in change, if that's the one thing I could change, that we are inclusive and welcome anyone who says, I am a Jew, to be a Jew. I'm involved in the gay lesbian issue because I feel that we need to be inclusive or I'm, I'm involved in Jews of color issue. We're not talking about changing the fundamental precepts of Judaism. We're helping, we're talking about understanding what, what being Jewish in the 21st century means and what kinds of, of nuances from other cultures and other religions um, can embellish and can enhance what it means to be Jewish. And I think that for, for a long time, for, for millennia, we have focused on Jewish interpretation of Jewish texts, right? We've talked about the way in which Jews argue and discuss and debate. To widen that discussion to other perspectives, to bring in other viewpoints, even viewpoints for people who are not Jewish, will inform our own internal discussions and we believe will help enhance Judaism for years to come. We found that that service resonates with young people. So we started an organization called Repair. 
at, you know, to repair the world. And so we work with different organizations, whether they be Jewish or non-Jewish, that to involve young people in it. And so we're finding that service is something that is a common denominator that can bring people to Gao and then help other people. I'm very blessed. I have the opportunity to have an idea and then I have the most talented people in the world to make that dream a reality. And I feel very blessed about it. I wanted to study what is considered the hardest language in the world and a growing superpower in a country that everybody says is impossible to understand. I think Chinese and Israelis actually have a lot of interesting similarities. China's ascendancy in um, world politics, it's going to shift the, the balance. China really is the biggest story for the rest of my life. Ahmadinejad's speech yesterday could have been given by Adolf Hitler. People are racist or just don't know, are not necessarily willing to even listen. Sometimes it, it comes from ignorance. We came this year to shaken up those uh, people at the UN that uh, got used to sitting in their comfortable chairs. Nowadays only it uh, kisses the butts of its members and they all have to have a turn even if they were how rogue nations as they are like Cuba and Iran and Libya and all these. It's wonderful to really see all these people who are fighting, who are not afraid to take a stand, who are not afraid to maybe go against rules, to be provocative. I'm just blown away by the fact that we made such an impact.